Hello, this is Gert Bethens. Hi, Gert. It, uh, it's Jason Curtis speaking from South Africa. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's good to to speak to you. Um, yes. I have uh, just received um, about uh, a few days ago um, an advanced listening copy um, of Cocoon Crash and uh, excellent album. Congratulations on that. Oh. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. Good, good. Um, I know you obviously um, are short on time, so I'll keep it uh, short and sweet. Um, but <laughs> but um, so, so um, what interests me, especially about the band, is that you shot into sort of the spotlight, into you know, with with uh, with uh, obviously not an addict, um, you know, from Paradise in Me, but um, in Europe. But more importantly. Um, it worked for you in America. Did, did that surprise you? Uh, yeah, actually we were really surprised because uh, uh, we weren't released at first in America with Paradise and Me, so we were still uh, kind of, our, our European tour was coming to an end. Right. And then all of a sudden uh, we, we heard the news that not an act was a big radio hit over in the States. People played it on K-Rock, which is the alternative yes. radio in, in Los Angeles. Yes. And uh, uh, it was already a while ago uh, since we've been doing the, this little tour with Alanis Morissette. So we didn't really expect anything to happen anymore. Right. Uh, so we were already kind of getting ready to, to start recording or start working on a cocoon crash when we got the news that uh, we might be in America for another year, yes. so that's probably why there's also yeah so, some time between uh, in between the release of Paradise and Me and Cocoon Crash. Right. Because uh, eventually we we, we turned out uh, uh, touring the whole the whole of last year in, in the United States. Yes, yes. Which was yes. of course a good thing. Yes, because, because really mind. Yeah, yeah, because you so. you actually spent um, three years in total actually touring that album, did you not? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, we started the tour uh, in Europe. This is a, a lot of European festival the first summer. Mm -hmm. Then we were planning on doing the same thing afterwards. Then Alanis took us, yes. and, and and yeah, there was uh, about a year added to it. Gee, it's a long time, man. Eh? <laughs> yeah, it is a long time. <laughs> now, like I say, I, yeah. I did. I was a little bit surprised at first uh, because of America showing this sudden interest, but then again, it's, it's such an advantage to uh, to go to America that I felt really grateful to be on the road for another year. I didn't really mind. Sure, sure. I'm sure you didn't mind us, because it's not the easiest territory in the world that, uh, well, for a, a European band to conquer. No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. But now, in recording the new album, um, were you aware that you now sort of obviously had this combined... Uh, U.S. and European audience that uh, you know that would be looking out for this album, and, and did, did that influence the way that you recorded the album at all? I don't think it really influenced the way we recorded it, but we were aware of it, that's for sure. And there was also a little bit of pressure, and you know that a certain people are waiting for that album, and you know the preferences of certain yes. uh, of people in, in the states being different from people in Europe. Sure. But it, while you're writing a song and while we're working on it with the whole band, you you just try very hard not to pay attention to those kind of things at all because it's it's really not a good thing for the creative process. I think mm. that uh, that you're just focusing on markets instead of on, on creativity Product. and, and soul. Sure. So so yeah, that that's what we tried not to do. Definitely, that's mm. to, to think about that. Mm -hmm. And and what's interesting uh, for me is uh, is Gil Norton. Um, did, how did that relationship actually happen? Did it happen because of what happened in America, or was it had you intended to use someone like Gil Norton um, as producer on the next album? Well, uh, us do, being a little bit successful in Europe and in America uh, definitely helped to get somebody like Gil Norton, because when you're just a, a very small band, uh, a man like Gil Norton probably wouldn't pay attention to you. Absolutely. So we were a bit lucky by... Uh, by having a little bit of success, and we definitely just wanted to try somebody else after after Jean Blaute, who was our uh, the Belgian producer for the first two albums. Mm -hmm. We were really happy with him, but we wanted we wanted to go for something completely different. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when we heard of A and R persons and of people in the record company, that uh, 
Bill Norton was one of the options. We were so excited that we wanted to meet him right away. So he came to a concert in, in Germany. He really liked the show, and he also turned out to be a very nice guy. Right. And uh, in, in the studio, too, the, the, the way we worked with him was a little bit different than for the first two ones. But that's yes. probably because we also changed as, as, uh, as musicians. We, we kind of stood very open uh, for Gil to, to change if he wanted to change and mm. to give suggestions mm. or, or to uh, adjust minor details if he wanted to. Mm. And uh, that's the way it worked very well, apparently. We mm. weren't really open to that in the past because we, uh, maybe we were a little bit obnoxious when we started, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So now we just said, well, if you feel like you should change something, please, please do. Mm. And mm. I think the single Believe is probably a very good example. Uh, example for that yes. because it was just a, like all our songs a very small uh, fragile acoustic thing that did, that lasted for I think about a minute and a half yes <laughs> and then uh, and then Gil suggested well add another verse to it and then, then this this bassy bass drum was added to it and yes. Eric's bass and Jan's guitar and everything came together right that's a very good example of how the way uh, the, the way you, uh, Gil worked with us right 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 and I like the result Yes, yes, because um, you know, with with the fact that you you know that you had uh, broken into America um, and had you know and and enjoyed um, the success you did with your with the, your tours and obviously with uh, you uh, with the single, did, did that give you sort of an added confidence? You know, when you went back into into record Cocoon, or was it more sort of uh, did did you feel a pressure? Um, you know, due to the expectation obviously of bi of now having a bigger audience uh, I, I think it's probably a combination of, the, of both I think we, we did feel more or less I think more confident than, than before uh, recording Paradise and Me because uh, we, we did have a little bit of response with Paradise and yes. Me so we felt as if we really could do it and not a lot has changed since then except for the bass player and mm. we still thought we we were still writing uh, okay songs, right. and uh, so uh, we w we felt pretty confident that this would be the best one so far. Mm. On the other hand, it is true that uh, so many people uh, doing things for you and me, having met so many different people over the world of different record companies, you know that all those people probably have something in mind of the third album, and I, oh. I know that... Uh, if, if you put all the opinions together, <laughs> just, uh, a lot of different opinions. Absolutely. So you think about that, and, and sometimes it becomes a little bit chaotic by sure. what do people ex ex expect from me, and you sure. try, like I said before, you try not to pay pay attention to it at all, but sometimes it's hard, because mm. I remember uh, somebody walking in, in the studio in Brussels and telling us that we didn't have our second Not an Addict no. yet. No. And, and that's the kind of thing you want to hear. Yeah, that's... <laughs> when you're already in the studio. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, no, you don't want to hear that, no. Because I say, I mean, it, uh, I'm sure, you know, it, it, the, well, as I say, the, the relationships in the band um, as well, I mean, obviously with, uh, you know, uh, with your sister as well, you've had to, um, I'm sure have to, well, you've had to um, bond and be a, a lot closer to get through, you know, all the, all the, all the attention um, and expectation from from people, you know, based on the success mm -hmm. of the album. Yeah, to, to me, it's it's very very important, especially since we're a live band and we spend so much time on the road mm -hmm. that we are uh, we're a very close uh, a close uh, bunch of people mm -hmm. that we that we are friends yes. and that I can do this together with my with my sister. Yes. Who. Uh, who I think I understand best in the whole world, and I, I think she she knows who I am too. Yes, we've, we've pretty much been through the same uh, thing from 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 scratch to here, and uh, I think that's a big advantage to have somebody who really understands you. Yes, when something happens without having having, having to to, to yes. say too much. Yes, sometimes she she knows what I'm going through just by looking at me, and it's. It's also very important to, to laugh about a lot of things. Sure. Kind of to share the same sense of humor, so I think sure. that's, that's not to be underestimated. Sure. Either. Yeah, because I'm sure, you know, um, you can't take uh, too much of it seriously as much as it's important, but, um, you know, otherwise you'd probably go out of your mind. <laughs> yeah, definitely, because it's really not that important. Sure. We, we 
we do try to take our music seriously while yes. writing songs and while recording it, but afterwards we we don't think it will change the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's uh, it's definitely uh, changing a couple a couple of. Uh, a few hundred thousand people's opinion, which is good. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's true. Mm, but but now, sort of, in in your opinion, uh, good. Uh, what what makes K's choice uh, what it is? You know, um, you know, is it is it a combination of things, or is it is it is it the voice? Is it the melody? The lyric? You know, what you know? What are you doing um, differently that say others aren't? That has now given you this edge. Uh, I'm not sure. I thought about this a couple of times when people asked me before, and I, it, it's probably I, the the most important thing is definitely uh, my sister's voice. Yes. Which is uh, um, probably quite unique. Mm. And uh, I think music-wise, it, it's probably a combination of uh, both what Sarah is doing and what I'm doing, mm. what we're both composing uh, separate from each other. Mm. And the way the, the uh, our musicians have their their own personal input, they all listen to very different kind of music. Mm. Sarah knows what what, uh, what kind of songs I write, but when she writes one, it's always a little bit different. Mm. Our lyrics are usually completely different. Sarah's really uh, explicit, uh, straightforward, mm. is where I'm uh, as honest, but in a completely other kind of way, mm. probably more abstract, uh, mm. less understandable kind of way. <laughs> okay. And I think it's the, it's the combination of, of extremes also, like uh, like feeling that some uh, very intimate lyrics only need a very intimate setting, like just yes. the guitar or something. Yes, yes. And on the other hand, you have, you have this uh, drum loop mm. explosions with a distorted guitar mm -hmm. that uh, that's necessary to, to put other uh, to arrange uh, another kind of feel or another kind of lyrics. Mm. And I think it's just be being open to whatever uh, serves the soul of the music mm. is the most important thing we're about. And maybe not every band thinks like that, although I know a lot of bands who mm. do the same thing. So well, successful maybe bands. We're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but successful <laughs> bands, you see. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> but so, um, in, in writing uh, the new album, um, it, the band has been quoted as saying that it's it's the next, um, or, or rather, you you wrote about it being the next level about losing, you know, innocence. Is this sort of true of the band and you because of uh, what has happened to you over the last three years? You mean r writing about the loss of innocence, for example? Well, as I say, obviously the American experience um, must have had uh, an influence on, you know, on on you writing lyrics for, you know, for the new album and, and putting the songs together. Um, but yeah. it's referenced that, um, you know, th the songs talk about losing innocence. Um, yeah. You know, that this is now the next level for you. How, how would you sum up where Kay's Choice are at the moment with Cocoon Crash? Um, I, uh, I think I was... Uh I was already ri writing about the the topics I still mm. meant to touch a couple of years ago, and probably the way we've been living the last couple of years mm. on tour has uh, has emphasized a couple of things. Are are uh, hopefully made us a little bit more uh, more wise or something. I don't mm. know. And I pro probably it did. Probably it did mature our, our lyrics a little bit. Mm. That's that's what we both hope mm. for sure. Mm. And then, do do you think um, that radio um, and press will embrace Cocoon um, as 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 much as they did on the last album, or, or do you foresee sort of a more critical, um, less forgiving time? You know, where you know it'll be uh, that more will be expected of you from this album. Um, you know, because because of the success that you had with the last album. Uh, I think it kind of depends from country to country because I, I was always told that the third album is the hardest one. Yes, that difficult. People uh, are ready to criticize it before it's it's released. Yes, but uh, I so far I, the album is not released in Belgium either. But so far we have really good responses from the interviews we did we did uh, with the Belgian press. Good. They all got the advanced CDs and they they told us they really liked it. So. Right. And, and, and 
unless they're all lying at you. <laughs> yeah, because you know the funny thing is that any any band that brings out um, you know brings out something that does very well in America and obviously in your own territories as well. Um, when you bring out the next thing, then they say, okay, well, you know, we're not going. You know, Paradise Lost was was great, and they and they didn't sit there and pick it apart. Whereas um, now they sort of look at you as being this priority act um, with this with a with a bigger following. So now the expectation. Um, from the press and obviously also from you know from the listeners is is is, is greater you know yeah that's true mm -hmm. I think so mm -hmm. yeah. and um, will you be um, uh, are you going to be going back on the road again um, and and touring um, extensively again with this album yeah we're, we're starting our tour uh, in in our home country in Brussels yes uh, in the Botanique the 19th of April right. and we're going to do a couple of dates in Amsterdam per detail. Great. we're going to tour Germany sure. do the Lilith tour yes. in the States yes yeah, that's and a fantastic yeah, I'm tour I'm really looking forward to that yeah it's, that's it's a, it's fantastic a, beautiful uh, festival. Yes, I'm actually going to try and catch that in June because I'm um, I'm going to be um, in the States at that time. So I'm actually oh, hope really? yeah, I'm hoping to 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 see that in I think when it when it gets to Los Angeles, um, I'm going to try and catch I it. I think we'll be there. Yes, yes. Uh, on that lap of the tour. We we're going to do two weeks and I think it's going to be West Coast. Wonderful. Well, great. <laughs> That yeah. actually makes my trip all the more worthwhile, which is great. Yeah, um, Gat, <laughs> if I could ask you um, one last favour, if I may, um, I'm going to be putting this uh, interview um, into print media, but I'm also going to be putting it out on a uh, on a college station. So uh, there'll be about 360,000 people that'll hear the interview um, over the next few weeks. Um, would you be able to do an ID for me? Of course. What's the name of the station? Um, okay, it's all that you need to do is uh, the name of the show, uh, because what I do is I syndicate. Um, this will be syndicated to various stations, uh, various college stations throughout uh, South Africa. So it's uh, um, the name of the show is the Cutting Edge. Um, it's very cliched, but you know that's what I do. <laughs> but um, if, you, if you could perhaps just say hi, this is Gart from Cage Choice, and you're listening to the Cutting Edge. Cutting edge. That's correct. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Hi, this is Gert from Case Choice calling all the way from Belgium and you're listening to the Cutting Edge. Excellent. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Oh, you're very welcome. And so con congratulations once again on the album. Um, so Thank fa you. Fantastic. As I said, the album... Um, uh, we was actually um, so Paradise in Me was was released um, only late, um, well, sort of l last year because of the success it had in the States. Um, but this album, okay. yeah, this album um, has is a is a, a big priority for for Sony in South Africa. So I'm hoping that uh, we can get enough interest from it that uh, you guys could actually come out here um, and play at some point, which I think would be great. That would be great. Mm -hmm. it's, it would be uh, an honor to come tour in, in, in your country. It's so Lovely. Beautiful. Thank you very much. And good luck with it all. I hope it all goes very well. And perhaps I can catch up with you when, uh, when I'm in America. Okay. Maybe see you there. Thank you very much, Gat. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye now.